All right, the next uh, th thing we're going to be doing here is going to use prime factorization um, from last section to find what's called the greatest common factor, which I will refer to from here on out as the GCF. Well, the greatest common factor is really exactly what it says. Um, it can be found in several different ways. It can either be found by listing all the factors and circling the greatest one or using prime factorization. Remember, the factors are any two numbers that can multiply together to um, reach a certain number. So, for example, the factors of 6 would be 6, 1, 2, and 3. So, what we're going to try to find is listing two or more numbers, and we want to find the biggest number that can go into both of those things, or in our first example, all of those things. So there's one way to do it where you can just list out all of the factors and then you find the biggest one. Now if you're doing something that has three numbers, it has to show up in all the numbers. It can't just show up in two of the three. So for example here, we have 30, 45, and 75. So we are going to list out all of our factors so we have 1 and 30, we have 2 and 15, we have 3 and 10, uh, 4 does not go in, 5 does, goes in 6 times, and now we're kind of working our way back down. All right. Kind of helps, obviously, to uh, list them in order. Um, might be your best bet to kind of reorder these, but doesn't necessarily matter. Um, 1 and 45, uh, 2 does not go in, 3 does, uh, 15, and 4 does not, 5 does, 9, uh, 6 does not, 7 does not, um, so on, um, 75, <coughs> excuse me. 175, 2 does not, 3, 25, 4 does not, 5, and 15. So if you look, the biggest factor that goes into both would be 15. So we would say the GCF of these three numbers would be 15. Okay, so that's an example where you would write them all out. Um, I think that takes a long time. So here's a different method to do here. Um, we can use prime factorization, a factor tree, um, to find the greatest common factor. So uh, first we need to remember how to do a factor tree. So multiple ways to break up 39. So 3 and 13, and you're done. And for the sake of this, I would not use exponents. I would not use exponents. And 5, oops, and 13. So this one, pretty easy to tell that the greatest common factor um, is just 13. 13 is the biggest number that goes into both. Not always going to be that simple necessarily. Um, so basically to find using prime factorization, you circle any prime factors that they have in common and multiply those prime factors together. In this case, the only thing they have in common is 13. That's all we're going to list. So we don't really need to, um, do any multiplying. Only write the numbers they have in common. If my pen would unfreeze here. There we go. So just 13. All right, let's do another one here. We actually have to do a little more work. So again, factor tree, I'm going to do 9 and 10 for 90. Nine and ten and 
three and three and two and five. And there's all my primes. I'm going to list them two, three, three, five. 150, 15 and 10, 2 and 5, 3 and 5. So I have 2, 3 and 2, 5. So now here's how this works when you have multiple um, factors in common here. So I'm going to write down 2. times 3, times 5, times 5. Again, so now we circle all the prime factors and write it down below that they have in common. In this case, they have a 2 in common, they have a 3 in common, and they have just one 5 in common. And there's my 5. Leave out the ones that are not in common. So if you can't circle something in both, then you can't write it down. So then to find the actual greatest common factor, not the greatest common prime factor. The greatest common prime factor would be five. But that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the greatest common factor. Biggest number that can go into both. So two times three is six times five is 30. So the GCF there would be 30. All right. So, 120 and 192, 12 and 10, and 4 and 3, circle, 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 so in this case I got two, three twos, a 3 and a 5, that one, and then to do 192. So what can go into 192? So first off, you're going to want to, um, we could use some of our rules, 1 plus 9 plus 2 is 12, and so a 3 should go into 192. Now the key is how many times? How many times? One ninety two divided by three. Scratching this out on my paper here. is 64, which obviously is not a prime number, so we need to keep working down this here, 8 and 8, 2 and 4, 3 and 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 twos. And 1, 3. Okay, so the, all they have in common looks like are the twos. So we're going to circle the twos and write them down. Circle and write. Circle and write. And we do have a 3 in common. Don't forget the 3. So now we have 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. So the GCF there is 24. All right, 49. We have 7 and 7, both prime. Uh, and we have 12 and 12, 4, so again, these are factor trees from last chapter, so I'm going to quick, maybe need to go back 
take a peek at the last section. So it looks like here we have two, two, no numbers in common. This vocab word is called, down here, relatively prime. I put R, P down here, and this is the definition you'll want to write down. Two or more numbers that the only thing they have in common, the only number that would go into 49 and 144 both is 1. Okay, so to tell whether a number is relatively prime, uh, you could list the numbers out. Um, or you could um, do a factor tree and see if they have a GCF. Some of these you might be able to do. Like obviously these um, are would be a no. Both have a five, right? Twenty-four. You could list them out, or you could do, you know, kind of look at some of their common factors. Seven and five, eight and three. Probably already to tell that those are yes, right? Because that's going to be four and two. 2, 2, 3, they have no prime factors in common. 13, 24, that's a prime. Um, and that would be a yes, those are relatively prime. 16 and 25, 5 and 5 is all that will go in there. Those are, that's a yes, it's a relatively prime, right? It's 4, 4, they're just going to have 2s. Okay. Remember, if you have 3, okay, like up here, you have a set of three. You have to be able to circle them. Okay, I'm going to redo this one actually. Let's take a peek here and redo this one as a set of three. Okay, so three and ten, two and five, two. Nine and five and three and three. Apparently we have Three and twenty-five and five five. So we have three times five times five. Can only circle if it shows up in all three. Okay, so these all have a three, okay, and they all have a five. So half to if it only shows up in two of the three, you can't circle. So I'm gonna write three times five again so whatever you circle write down a representative from in there multiply it out so that's an example of how to do it with three 